very chaotic day, as you can imagine. Why do you need to have a party if you want to entertain? Here it becomes increasingly grim. America is that they're uh, we're so well locked into like what we personally want and never consider you know how whatever we do affects everyone else. Actually, I don't think most people really know what's going on. To certainty that we what to do in every situation. We want you to hear us. Only then do we transmit. We address you as you to see outward from within the unseen mechanism. This is a story of wars won and lost, of regions bought and sold, establishing the present-day boundary, completing the current formation of the United States. Uh, I think American culture basically takes from other cultures. That's why we're the melting pot. I guess it's our, our willingness to stand for what we believe in. That's a great American quality. Most Americans I know are very polite once you get past a certain wall that, that we, we seem to... Yeah, that's right. We're conditioned to it. They're a competitive society, and... You need to work towards getting as much as you can, and you know people are very focused in on it, and it's you know, it's kind of like a cancer. It gets worse and worse every year, and people don't stop to look around. We all have the same problems; they just sort of manifest in different ways, like. Some people it's relationships, some people it's politics, some people, you know, all different things, but usually the underlying cause is the same. Yeah, people from all different walks of life, from all different countries. We have immigrants. Differing opinions are always, people always have different opinions. Thank you. 
digital language, an important and efficient mode of communication for here, now. We have more things to do. We have more teams. American flags very precious to me. I don't know what else to say, but I'm not used to interviews. Willful ignorance. Americans want simple answers to complex questions. We want to be individualistic, but at the same time we want to conform and we want to be part of the so-called group or the scene. I think the great similarity um, is that we are created in the image of God. That distinction separates us so much from the rest of the universe. People suffer. Look how they go, looking for bread. It's not so easy. I try to do the best I can in America. You try to do the best you can. You try to do the best and the best. Involved in this and that. Right now, we seem to be losing a lot of our values. The question of, of everybody seeing our lives because cultural differences are culturally mixed is a real is a real problem. And as a result, we are we are making our own identities. around the world we should see America this way. All the cultures coming together makes one beautiful culture because it's a greater understanding of each other. Today's kids, kids take, take for granted the way they live, the way they act. That's, that's it. That's what I feel. American quality, hard work and honesty. Because I was brought up that way in North Mississippi. To understand we had to give a good day's work for a day's pay.
want to go to work. I don't mind. We're really lucky to have those those mm -hmm. options. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think there's too many of them. It makes it hard to make choices, but ultimately like I think it's a it's a good thing. Everything is broken down so that we can make these choices, but um, it's hard when we're not just going by what our mothers did and do our own thing. <laughs> the freedom to think and just kind of do what you need to do to get through daily life, you know, for your family. Being comfortable in the fact that whatever else is going on in the world doesn't really affect you. You're aware of it, but ultimately, life still goes on without any changes. A desire for novelty and vitality. Always looking for something new. Creativity is American quality. The ability to find the viable alternative. The spirit of everything always being new and nothing being beyond our reach. I know there's a lot of skewed reports out there, but I think Americans best unite under a, a trauma or something that we've all had to undertake the pain of, and I think this war is something that has bonded us. I don't think I've seen a real dramatic change in the way people live, their thought process. I think Americans feel kind of superior to the rest of the world. I know they utilize more resources than anybody else, and I don't seem to be bothered by that. I'm proud to be American. I just wish that we were a little bit more united. Just the fact that we're at war all the time, I mean, it's, it brings us closer and closer, you know, makes us become better people. See how many American young men go to Iraq and die over this senseless war and killing. It seems to reach closer and closer as more people go out. Aside from family members, it's, you know, Americans always kind of go about their own daily business anyway. You know? It's politics that get in people's way across nations, not people. I think that changed everybody's, everybody's view of, of what American is, it really uh, woke people up, you know. We were complacent for a long time, thinking we were safe, and that changed things, you know. over the horizon and instantly become aware of a basic unity, a mental interrelation of all things and events. Our time capsule is now transmitting, manifesting sight and sound, revealing the wandering spirits. The aura decays. The here and now fall away. human nature is the need for creative work. At least society should maximize the possibilities for this fundamental human characteristic to be realized.
Nothing disappears. If one part of culture throws something away, another part will scavenge about and find another use for it. that we have cherished for so long has seen to be just deteriorating. So I really don't have hopes for anything, really. Only my own personal goals. If everyone here is selfish. And the environment and everything, it's just, there's no turning back. Whatever has happened, happened. And whatever effort we put it towards it now, it's not going to make a big difference at all. Some people say, hey, I love your place. It's a love-hate relationship with me. I mean, but you know, I'm here. The key is to gravitate to those, the bling blings of the world. And the values of the home and the, what have made home so strong in the past, they're not there anymore. And, and that's disturbing. But what concerns me is the complacency of the American people. We have no one to blame except ourselves. Very dismal part of our history. A story about the power of the little guy. What collapses culture's endless repetition, bleeding ideas into product, irreversible, transforming time, consumable. An end again. Growing density, collapsing of its own weight, absorbing an entire city.
what keeps America alive, passing fields wrapping the sky, in the sprawling emptiness, destruction seems endless. past, cutting the cities. Vanishing paths, driving thoughts, untying highways, keeping America alive. steady brainwave pattern in which the mind is in its most receptive mode. Characteristic of this transformation is the growth of a knowledge industry. You find out like what I got to say. They're just always trying to keep up with Joneses and be something exactly that they're not. And they just totally leave sight of what they originally were or are. And I think everybody's guilty of it. I think a lot of people have fallen into being fake and it's kind of it's kind of depressing like no one's really being who they are and I think it's up to uh, everyone to see and change the culture I don't know can't really wish for something just something unique and true for once right now nobody don't care about anybody everybody cares about themselves so basically it's who you are inside, what you're doing. And as far as America goes, I hope all the war and everything else stops. Live your dream. And the dream is peace. Probably having sex with somebody. I mean, that's the only thing worthwhile to dream about, you know. Who am I giving this interview to? <laughs> the last dream I have. No, I usually don't remember them. They say you dream every evening. The last dream I remember having, honestly, was stressing out about bells. I live in a world of reality. Doesn't do much good to dream. You got to get up and face whatever's out there.
the most prominent uh, dream was about uh, uh, my father dying, you see. I could dream uh, that he is dying in Pakistan, but I could uh, see him dying the whole night. Such experiences are possible. See, just like you have a television a signal going out, so it's, when you think of somebody in a critical situation, you think of somebody and that's transmitted. I want people to be nice to each other. Yeah. We just stand together. And I want the news to stop showing so many sad stuff, man. You know, that's all they show. It's not, they don't show any happy stuff. They just show all this bad decline I love. You really got to pop all around the world and look at everybody, read everybody's snippet. If you read 10 unfair articles, you might come away with a fair opinion. You can't even watch TV anymore. I just turn it off. Especially us being in two wars. I don't remember. Celebrities being important news. It's causing a lot of debate. Some of that debate is not always honest debate. Many times people are not intellectually honest and when they're discussing ideas, they just want to throw insults. And, and a lot of times there's a great lack of understanding. There really isn't much of a discussion. It's just a screaming of a point of view without taking in uh, what the other person might be saying. What we tell on the news, what we hear too often, so I work for most of the discussion and debate that you'll hear on television. We are transfixed within a culture of amnesia. It's a nightmare. The political system is a joke. It's a revolutionary situation. We are facing an era of unhealthy media diets. It's totally controlled environment, an environment that has been, been created by mass media. Of self-defining that goes on on daytime television. Try to cope with a loss of identity, a loss of direction. Our reception is decaying, discarded, isolated in a natural drift. We connect our own devices, shift our social focus, participation rather than representation. like the U.S. A country that is using its power to affect other societies. The chips are down in other countries that we do try to help as much as we can. We're of terrorism. We need to take steps to protect ourselves. With all the trouble times, I guess. It's just kind of an invasion of privacy now. I don't like it, but, you know, it's really good for the society. It's actually a radio man of government. I'm an American. Paranoid, obnoxious, murderous. And loudmouth, you know, with lots of good food. American quality would have to be like the freedom that we have, like we can, you know, be at a fair, listen to music. I guess it would have to be like having people fun. are becoming more into their TV and their microwave. It is brainwashing the nation. Television and video games desensitize people to the fact that they don't really realize that I need it now. what they see on the news is actually reality. Unaccountable stirring. 
wake up every now and then I'll realize I have dreamed something but I don't know what it is. Yeah. Gateway is an aperture beyond terrestrial comprehension. The brainwave video generator records the electrical activity of the human brain and through a biofeedback loop, actionizes brain readings into sound waves. Producing a corresponding light wave for every sound wave. The generator then synthesizes each color of the visual spectrum, gradually filtering an original image unlike any we have ever seen. A true visual human brain transmission. A new dream. I don't dream anymore, I'm too old. I honestly could not tell you, I, haven't, I can't remember a dream in years. If I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming about what I need to do at work tomorrow. Sometimes I try to remember an hour later, I wanna to come to work and tell you, hey, I had this dream, and I'd go blank. I used to remember them more. It's been a long time since I really had a uh, recurring dream or, you know, my thing is just to get up and go to work every day and make the best of each and every day. I remember, I remember realizing, like, even though it seemed like a random dream, it had a reason and it, it makes you think about things in your waking life that you just hadn't noticed before. Not to blame people who are dreamers, because if we take the example of the United States, all started from a dream in this country. I don't know, everybody's just being bought and fed this fear. They're all eating it up and, you know, it's like be afraid, stay in your houses, watch TV, see the commercials, buy those goods, 
be more afraid of staying around. There's been an infusion of misinformation and paranoia and a dumbing down of the national discussion. I think right now the American public is kind of on autopilot and I don't really blame the media. I, I don't know if it's nature or what, but people seem to want to follow more than anything. What happens is you lose a sense of your own responsibility in not just your, your personal life, but also in the world. Like we're a country based almost entirely on the media. You know, from a young age, everyone's kind of bred to believe exactly what they see on TV and what their teachers tell them. The whole like cross-cultural mass communication is so much easier for people to connect with each other, but it's also very disconnecting because people can just sit at home and sit in front of their computers. culture has changed beyond belief. We've gone through several years of the power structure trying to convince us to be scared. The only way this country can get any better is if our government gets better. It has to be a revolution first in my personal opinion. I the United States is going to be really contentioned upon what's happening right now in the Middle East. It's a big debate. This is the real debate. This is not the war. For Americans to wake up and start taking responsibility for their I own actions. I think all of us as citizens need to become more active in local politics and national politics and hold our politicians accountable. I'm pretty hopeful for the, for the future of America. I'm part of the movement to uh, make that, that future. I think uh, an underground rebel culture has I basically do the same thing George W. Bush is doing. I would fight like hell for independence. I think it's a good thing. I think it is affecting people are two, two separate sides of it. But I do think the war is necessary and it is affecting people a lot. I think people are getting tired of having their sons and daughters over there. And, but at the same time, I don't think people really understand everything and really take the time to understand why. I think it's scaring a lot of people. I think it's a, a very frightening thing to think of an entire generation of young people fighting for their lives. For, for what? And the war has caused uh, people who may not have issues of the war paid attention to what was going on to pay attention in a new way. That, uh, what they see and hear about the war are 
partial truths and they're beginning to understand that they have to use their own intelligence to determine what's really going on rather than listening to the media. Kind of really read up about it, be active about what's going on because it's really our generation that's going to be dealing with the consequences of it. demonstrating how to paint the flag white and how to wash it. It's an instruction on that campaign. History is in the making. Heat exchange is happening. Electrons are being dispersed. The universe is falling apart. And what do we have? Why do all messages gain noise? Intertwined and unleashing, embracing the propelling happening with every retelling. For every message, there is an equal potential for corruption. Generation loss is inevitable. Generation loss is unstoppable.
Tom Holland campaign. So much was said on both sides. I'm confused.
it's time going fast. Always remember, be positive, no negative. Thinking, thinking and think to do the right things. We have the right hand and the left. I got my special books in my office, I write my dreams. I got a books, books about my dreams. This is my own creation. Ladies and gentlemen, Lord Mayor, Your Honor, we are gathered here for a purpose. We have become a civilization intent on self-annihilation. As our population triples and our planet's natural resources are consumed at a rate far greater than our planet's ability to meet our basic needs, our survival depends on one thing and one thing only, without which we will become extinct. And yet we continue to ignore the empirical evidence at the extensions of our own human body. Truth, literally, at our fingertips. We have denied ourselves the sweet splendor of our species, the human brain. Now it was once believed that there was no direct, objective way to measure consciousness until today. Where you, the select few, will witness an image transmitted directly from the mind consciousness interface. My machine has the capacity to generate an image that will forever alter our perceptions of reality. It can probe the very essence of the human brain. Thought. The brainwave video generator will harmonize science and spirituality, revealing the intrinsic symbol of one's own soul. A portal of absolute truth. But I will go no further, for this machine does not deal in theory, but with immediate experience. Do I have any volunteers? Forms, qualities, lives, 
humanity, language, thoughts, the ones known, the ones unknown, the ones on the stars, the stars themselves, some shaped, others unshaped, the wonders of countries, the soil, the trees, cities, inhabitants, whatever they may be. Splendid suns, the moons and rings, the countless combinations and effects visible here or anywhere stand provided for in a handful of space, which I extend my arm and half enclose with my hand, containing the start of each and all, the virtue, the germs, 